Wheel spacers. You may have seen these on cars before, like this one. Looks cool, and you may be thinking, hey, I want my car to look like that. But before you go out and get yourself a set of wheel spacers for your car, we need to talk about the effect they have on the suspension and the way your car handles. Hello, I'm Hubert Mace, and this is Suspensions Explained. The design of a suspension, especially a front suspension, includes several parameters that are critical to the way the suspension handles forces like those from braking, acceleration, and impacts like potholes. The kingpin axis is the line going through the center of the upper ball joint or the upper spring mount in the case of a McPherson strut and the lower ball joint. It is the axis the suspension rotates around when you turn the steering wheel. Normal values these days for kingpin offset are from about 50 to 100 millimeters. You can see in this model how as the wheel is steered, the kingpin axis, shown as a dotted line, doesn't move because it is the axis the suspension rotates around. The scrub radius is there at the bottom and is the distance from the tire contact patch to the point where the kingpin axis intersects the ground. If the kingpin axis intersects the ground inboard of the contact patch, like it does here, the scrub radius is positive. If the kingpin axis intersects the ground outside of the contact patch, the scrub radius will be negative. Generally speaking, rear-wheel drive cars will have a positive small scrub radius, while many front-wheel drive will have a small negative scrub. We'll talk about why this is important to know later on. Normal values for scrub radius are between positive 15 and negative 15 millimeters. The bearing load line is the vertical line going through the center of the wheel. The kingpin offset and scrub radius are very important parameters in the suspension design because the braking, acceleration, and impact forces, together with the kingpin offset and scrub radius, create moments around the kingpin axis that try to steer the suspension. What keeps the suspension from actually steering is the fact that it is connected to the steering system and because the driver is holding the steering wheel in his or her hands. Of course, the larger these moments are, the more force will go into the steering system and the more work the driver will have to do to hold on to the wheel. This is why suspension engineers try very hard to keep the kingpin offset and the scrub radius as small as possible. Let's see how the forces acting on the suspension work together with both of these parameters. In the case of a driven axle, we will have an acceleration force pushing forward on the suspension. This force acts on the suspension at the wheel center. Now, this may seem counterintuitive because we think it should be the tire contact patch that's pushing the car forward. But we need to separate the wheel and tire assembly from the suspension at this point because we are really only interested in the forces acting on the suspension. We need to understand how the forces travel through the wheel and tire assembly to get into the suspension. Let's use this wheel as an example of what happens during acceleration. When the engine turns the drive shaft, the drive shaft applies a torque to the wheel, and the wheel generates an accelerating force with a friction between the tire and the contact patch. As the drive shaft twists the wheel, it wants to roll forward. But the only way that the wheel can transfer that force to the suspension is at the point where the two are attached to each other. The suspension is not attached to the wheel at the contact patch, it's attached at the bearing. So therefore, the only place where the tire can transfer the accelerating force from itself to the suspension is at the bearing. Since we have a force acting at the wheel center, to figure out how big a moment this creates around the kingpin axis, we need to know how far the wheel center is from the kingpin axis. And that is the kingpin offset. Of course, the bigger the kingpin offset, the bigger the moment around the kingpin will be, and the more work the steering system will have to do to resist it. In the case of impacts, like potholes, the situation is the same as acceleration, but the direction of the forces are opposite. Again, the smaller the kingpin offset, the smaller the moments the steering system will have to resist. Braking, on the other hand, is a little different. When we brake, we not only get a braking force pushing on the suspension, we also get a torque generated by the calipers grabbing onto the rotors. This torque tries to twist the suspension in the direction the wheel is rolling. What this does is make the suspension act as if the braking force was being applied at the tire contact patch. Since the force is now down at the ground, 
it works together with the scrub radius to generate a moment around the kinkpin axis, and just like during acceleration and impacts, the larger the scrub radius, the larger the moment will be that the steering system has to resist. Keep in mind that the moments caused by the accelerating and braking forces are coming from both the left and the right suspensions, and under normal driving conditions, these two would cancel each other out and the steering system wouldn't move. There are situations, however, when the left and the right forces do not balance each other out, such as when you're accelerating or braking with one wheel on ice or wet leaves. In that case, there will be a force pushing on the steering system that the driver's hands will have to resist. The bearing load line is a different situation because it doesn't have anything to do with acceleration or braking. The bearing load line is the vertical line going through the wheel center and represents the direction the weight of the car takes as it goes through the bearing. Suspension engineers try to keep this line passing through the space between the two bearing races here and here so that the weight of the car is being carried more or less equally by the two races. This helps maintain good bearing life for the life of the car. You can see here how the load line goes right between the two ball bearing races. Okay, now that we know how the various forces act on the suspension and the importance of the kingpin axis and scrub radius, let's look at what happens when we put a spacer between the wheel and the suspension. The car we showed at the beginning has two inch spacers installed, which is about 50 millimeters. Here is what happens to the scrub and kingpin offset with a 50 millimeter spacer installed. If we switch back and forth between a view with and without the spacer, you can see how the kingpin offset and scrub radius have grown significantly with the spacer. In the case of the scrub radius, if we had a scrub of 15 millimeters before, it would now be 65 millimeters. That's almost five times larger. If we had a kingpin offset of 50 millimeters before, it would now be 100 millimeters or twice as large. And if we had a negative 15 millimeter scrub, we would now have a positive 35 millimeter scrub. This is especially significant because not only have we more than doubled the size of the scrub radius, we've also changed its direction. This means that the moments created around the kingpin axis by the braking forces have also switched direction, and that is not what the suspension was designed to handle. Lastly, Let's look at the bearing load line. You can see how the bearing load line, instead of going nicely between the ball bearing races, now sits well outside the bearing altogether. This means the bearing will have a large moment to resist, a moment it was not designed to handle. You could expect a much shorter bearing life and failures in a part that is normally designed to last the life of the car. Putting spacers on your car may look cool, but be aware of the effects they have on the handling and the durability of your car and be prepared to replace parts that you normally would never have to. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that subscribe button and notifications, and we'll see you next time for more Suspensions Explained.